welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we have another 2-in-1 WWE Elite action figure review on the brand new WWE Elite Series 85 Bray Wyatt and Karrion Cross action figures, man. Now, I know a lot of people have been waiting on an updated Bray Wyatt like this because, you know, the, the, the first Elite, the first go-round, I mean, you guys know how I feel about that figure. Probably one of my most disappointing releases, like as far as ringside exclusives and just in general, man, that figure was god-awful. Probably one of my... Like, I think it was at the top of the worst figures of the year. I know it was de it was definitely in the top three worst figures of the year last year was our ringside exclusive Bray Wyatt, Firefly Funhouse Bray Wyatt. And then on the other side, guys, we have Karrion Cross or Killer Cross is what I like to call him. Over here, first time in the line, he does have a basic coming soon with an alternative head sculpt. And yeah, man, I, I can't wait to get into the review. I think I'm pretty hyped about this. We got some double jointed arms on this Bray Wyatt. Huskus the effing pig making his way into the elite lineup. So, I mean, a lot of great stuff going on, man. Let's go ahead and get into it. Front viewing window of our talent here. Images on the front, of course. Images on the side. You do have bio reads. If you'd like to read it on the back, you could go ahead and pause it. Rest of the figures in the wave, which we'll get into. Another great image of both the talents here, which I like these alternative images. You gave us like a promo looking and then like a Firefly Funhouse. So yeah, you like that. If you guys would like to grab these, you can go over to Ringside Collectibles, WrestlingFigures.com. Use promo code MDTOYS to save yourselves 10% when shopping over there. That way you can save yourself some money as well as grab some great figures, especially these brand new Elite 85 ones. But with that all said and done, guys, let's shut the hell up and dive into Elite 85 Bray Wyatt and Killer Cross and see what the hell they're about. So here is Wyatt and Cross out of their packaging. Guys, I'm liking what we got going on. I spent the time, all right? I went through the strategic strategy of posing these guys around, finding out what the hell these guys are all about, and I'm liking what I'm seeing so far. We're going to dive into all the details and what I like, don't like, all the Chris and Crosses, not you. And we're going to get into everything, guys. I, I think we got some, we, we may have something special going on here, young man. So what we're going to do is run through Bray Wyatt's accessories and Bray Wyatt, then we're going to run it back and take a closer look at Cross's accessories and Cross himself. So let's shut the hell up and get into it. So for both of these guys, you actually don't get a ton of accessories, man. The main accessory that you get with Bray Wyatt is going to be Huskus the Pig. Like, we got the stuff going on in the face. You got a nice scope going on right here. Got the shoes, muscle tee, shorts, sweatbands. I mean, he's looking pretty good. He also has a spot in the back for Bray Wyatt's hand. Now, if you wanted to plug this onto the figure, you will unplug one of the hands like so. And then you will place Huskus on there like an interchangeable hand. And then he can operate like a puppet there. So that is how you would would put him onto Bray Wyatt's hand. You'll have to remove Bray Wyatt's hand and shove him up in there. So there you go. That is how you operate Huskus the Pig. Now outside of Huskus the Pig, we also get interchangeable hands. We get our waving hands or you can't see me hands like we've seen with John Cena. We get some beautiful mic holding hands, which are just, just should, should come with every figure known to man that Mattel ever releases for wrestling figures. Give him mic holding hands, man. Can't, can't speak to the audience without a mic. And then he also comes with his hurt heel hands, but it is the prayer style hands or the flat hands or the waving hands or the you get the point, but that's pretty much it for Bray Wyatt's accessories, man. Not a ton of stuff going on with it, but I think everything we got here is necessary. So getting into Bray Wyatt himself, guys, starting out at the head sculpt, we have seen this head sculpt multiple times. We saw it on his basic, and we saw it on his ringside exclusive elite. I like this head sculpt. I don't have a problem with this head sculpt. I think it looks great. Would I have liked to seen like a wide-eyed or like a new head sculpt? Absolutely. Maybe an interchangeable head sculpt, but overall what we're getting here, I actually enjoy a lot. Going down into the torso, now this is what we should have gotten with our ringside exclusive Bray Wyatt. You actually have the collar sculpted on here. Now, I will say the sweater color isn't accurate. I can't recall him wearing like this maroon color. It is on the back of the packaging, so I guess he has worn like a maroon style or a maroon colored sweater. But I think, again, we're still missing our like iconic Bray Wyatt Firefly Funhouse look. The ringside exclusive wasn't right. The basic was right, but it was a basic figure. This one could have been perfect, but the red is not the accurate color. And then when you get down into these pants, they look, uh, why are they orange, you know? I don't think, I think, like, multiple sources have confirmed that Firefly Funhouse Bray Wyatt has never worn these orange pants on television. I do like this sculpt. I think these pants are fantastic. I would have liked to seen maybe, like, the sweater, like, sculpt, uh, like, have an end to the sculpt. Like, it either should have been at the lower part of this torso, got a little scuffage on the lower torso, or we should have gotten, like, a belt accessory that goes around here. That way it looks like it's tucked in or something. I know he doesn't tuck the sweater 
fighter in, which is why I think like maybe you could have like even added a uh, like a belt of of the end of the sweater. Like here I have the basic for comparison. So like you guys can see where the sweater ends right here. If they would have like cut that off at the waist and had that as the belt instead of sculpting an actual belt, that would have been pretty cool. But you know it is what it is. It's not the biggest deal. It just looks a bit plain Jane from shirt into the crotch piece. But again, the orange color there, he has his similar Bray Wyatt boots we've seen on all his elites pretty much. He does have double jointed arms, man. This is absolutely incredible. You will see later on with the Elite 85 Becky Lynch figure that they are adding double jointed arms to all of our elites moving forward. They're going to start like slowly integrating them. They are pinless, which could be a problem. I don't know how well we're going to be able to customize and switch those out, but AEW figures apparently have rubbed up on these guys and said, you know what, Brad? And you know, it's forced their hand to where they have to, I guess, upgrade and make double jointed arms for our elites. We've been calling for this for absolute years. Hopefully they, you know, they hold up over time. The sculpt of the sleeves looks really nice. That's a bit kind of loose there, but ab crunch looks to be very good. Again, I love this sculpt of the pants. I like everything I got going on with this Bray Wyatt. It's actually a really nice figure. I was pumped for it when I first saw it, but sitting here posing it around and stuff, I'm really intrigued with. The only thing I don't really like is he, on the left side, he kind of like, like this part down here is kind of loosey-goosey already, and he kind of leans forward, but overall, man, this is a very damn good figure. Now, for your Bray Wyatt Elite figure comparisons, guys, here's the Elite 85 in the middle. We have the ringside exclusive over here. I did pop the head and feet off because I hated this figure so much. I was like, hell no, nah, bro. I'm just going to make fix-ups and stuff, and then I got rid of the feet for my, my Adam Hangman page. So, you know what? Here's what you get. You know, everything about it. If these pants were this color and the sweater was more of a, a lighter red like this, this figure would be uh, very damn good. I still think it's very damn good, but it would be more accurate and it would look really good. Like, Jesus, man, if this was the right color, it would be so much better. But this figure right here crushes this figure over here, and it's not even close. Like, no doubt about it, the Elite 85, I would grab over the Ringside Exclusive. The only reason you'd buy the Ringside Exclusive is if you want all the the puppets and you wanted the background, you know, the little Firefly Funhouse background that they give you. But overall, man, I really am enjoying this Bray Wyatt. If you guys would like to see a articulation standpoint, he is on a ball joint here, as always. Head gets a little bit tight right there. He has a pretty good ab crunch and back. Like, the back is really, really good there. His shoulders can go out and rotate all the round. He does get the bicep swivel. The double-jointed hands are, or arms are, are super great. I think they're great. He can do everything, talk on the phone. He can do all the things that you love to see. He can waist swivel. He can do the splitsies because he is on ball joints. He can kick far pretty good. He can't kick back as much because of the butt cheek flap. He does have the double-jointed knees. He has the upper thigh cut. He has some feet rotation as well as some ankle pivot. It. Not the best pivot ever, but it is there. It's better than most of the women figures, or actually all of them in that regard. And yeah, I th like this figure just feels really good in the hand, man. I'm really impressed with this Elite 85 Bray Wyatt figure. Now for Cross's accessories, guys, again, you don't get a lot of stuff going on with it. The main accessory is this trench coat. Now, I'm not entirely sure, but I'm pretty sure we've seen this before. It's like a smaller version of the Undertaker's coat. It's not, you know, it's not near as long. It kind of reminds me of the Sting one, but it doesn't have the extra flap here, and it also reminds me of the Elite 70 Balor entrance jacket, but it also doesn't have the little piece here, so this may be an entirely new deal, and I'll show you what this looks like on the figure later on in the video, but I think it looks good. I like the, you know, the faux leather and everything like that. I just threw one of his interchangeable hands in the floor, so that's excellent, but I like what we got going on right here. Cloth accessories make the world go round, so I am enjoying that. Outside of that, guys, he gets two pairs of interchangeable hands. You have your mic holding hands with the white tape, with the white peg. The white peg is beautiful. You love to to see it, but we don't need the white peg. If he doesn't have hand tape, the peg should be skin tone. If he has hand tape, the peg should be white. There you go. Or black, you know, whatever, you know, whatever color tape he's wearing. Outside of that, he also has fists that have tape on it as well. So that is it for Cross's accessories, man. Not a ton of stuff going on here. So let's move on to the figure itself. Now getting into Cross, guys, I actually like this a lot. I like the head sculpt. I think it looks just like him. I like the formula that they chose for him. Maybe the arms are a little bit too big, but I don't think it's the biggest deal. I still like them. I think the formula works. The tattoos look really, really great. They did give him the Cesaro slash big cast torso going on. Really like that. All of his tattoos look really, really good. You do get a little bit of tattoo run over on the wrist right there, but overall looks good. Back tattoos look good. Black trunks, white wrist tape. It does have cross right there. A little bit of a misalignment. Not the biggest deal ever. He's on ball joints, which I did not expect. So that is actually crazy. I thought for sure he would not be on ball joints, but they did give him ball joints, man. Pretty shocked. You know, you, you learn something new every single 
day here. Going down into the lower legs. Now, this is where it's very weird to me. They gave him, like, normal lower legs, like as if he had, like, regular wrestling boots, like Kurt Angle or Cody Rhodes or something like that. But he gave, they gave him the very long kick pads. Like, these are AJ Styles kick pads. They're not the Johnny Gargano syndrome. They're not anything crazy. They are regular black kick pads with regular lower legs to give him that extra boost in height. But it just looks awkward to me. I don't know about you guys, but it looks weird. So I am going to give, you know, this guy some surgery simply because I, I just think it looks a bit off. I don't, I don't know really how to describe it, but it's a great figure, but it's just kind of plain Jane because it is Killer Cross. But I think it does look like him, you know. I, I, I look at this figure and I think Karrion Cross. I think the likeness is there. All the parts feel good. It feels good in the hand. He can pose around really good and all that good stuff. So you shouldn't have any problems with this cross figure, man. Really good stuff. Really great job by Mattel. Now, I don't have a Scarlet Basic to compare this guy to. You know, we haven't gotten that figure just yet, or at least I haven't. So here is the cross up next to Finn Balor. And there's a little height comparison right there. You know, he's supposed to be 6'4". I think Finn Balor is 5'11 or 6 foot. So, you know, it works out pretty good. He may be a little bit too tall. Not the biggest issue in the world. And then if you compare him to Bray Wyatt, who's supposed to be 6'3", he is just a little bit taller there. This is more of like probably 6'5 in real life. Not the biggest deal again but we'll see what happens when we switch out those parts. We'll see if his height is you know truly affected to a, a big degree or if it's not that big of a deal we'll find out together especially when we do surgery and stuff. I could always switch it back but that does it for your carry and cross comparisons. And I think that about wraps up our Elite Series 85 Bray Wyatt and carry and cross guys. What, what are you doing? It's like you can be there. You can be there. Overall man thoughts on both of these are great. Like I think these guys are going to finish really high in our Elite Set ranking when we get there. I think both of them are very impressive figures. I think we're steadily getting better set by set. I think the Bray Wyatt is a definite upgrade over the Ringside Exclusive. If you can get the Ringside Exclusive puppets and background without getting the figure, I would do that. Like, 100% do that because that's the only reason you should buy it. The Carrion Cross is very good. I would recommend both of these guys. I think they're both really good figures. While I'm not even, I'm not even a Carrion Cross fan, I'm really not. I don't really see the appeal. However, I know a lot of people like him and uh, his figure kicks ass so there you go if you guys would like to grab these you can go over to ringside collectibles wrestlingfigures.com use promo code mdtoys to save yourselves 10 percent when shopping over there you know never forget the code man always use the code to save that money so that you can buy other figures with that extra money that you save but that pretty much does it for this two-in-one review guys thank you so very much i had to wait on my full set to come in today that is why i was uploading this late instead of earlier in the day tomorrow's review will go up earlier however but before we get out of here guys let's get into our random shout out and this shout out is going to go to hyper productions who says mdt cries about big knee pads also mdt cries about small knee pads mattel come on brad make up your mind and he's referring to our video yesterday on the jeff hardy and triple h where i referred to the small knee pads but i wasn't crying about the knee pads i was more of just saying like i was just saying that they weren't accurate even though they allow for more articulation i don't care either way because i'm gonna switch them you know what i'm saying so it doesn't really matter but i also thought thought that was funny that he decided to say that and apparently everybody else did too so I thought that was great but huge shout out to Hyper Productions for that man but I'm getting the hell out of here guys thank you so very much for watching I hope you guys did enjoy subscribe to the channel follow me on Instagram and Twitter my damn toys and I will see you guys in the next video thank you and don't cross the line you jackass you cross the line I've been